identity. Uh, it's related to the uh, 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 culture that we're in today and uh, everyone's desire for uh, uh, Nathaniel, just bring me down a little bit. Uh, everyone's desire to uh, uh, find their identity, that's something that the culture has certainly held up uh, as uh, vital and as uh, important. And uh, so rather than bashing uh, that movement, I want to instead show you that God is all about your identity and that the identity that he is involved in you having may be different than what you uh, have sought after or what maybe the culture is telling you that is important. Uh, back in 1987, George uh, Gecko stood up. Some of you will remember that name. Uh, he's, he's a fictional character in the movie Wall Street. And uh, he said in a, in a speech to his stockholders, he said, greed, for lack of a better term, is good. That greed is good. And as a result of that move, uh, movie, a movement was born where greed became a virtue rather than one of the sins that are mentioned in Scripture and uh, became uh, so much a part of business life and cultural life. And uh, it, people began to embrace the notion that greed is good for culture, it's good for society, it's good for so many things. In 2011, uh, Lady Gaga uh, put out a, a brand new album called Born This Way. And it was the result of what was uh, thought of at the time, uh, some scientific uh, research that had been done to show that those who uh, were, were gay actually had a separate genetic, uh, a separate gene uh, to identify. Now that's since been shown not to be true at all, that, that uh, uh, you are not DNA biologically born with that kind of orientation. Of course, they're still studying that, and, and they may come up with, with uh, some uh, thinking on that. That's, that's fine and good, but what happened then is, uh, again, that cultural phenomenon, just like George Gecko in 1987, now in 2011, the idea that you are born a certain way uh, began to take root as it has in our culture. She would say in that song, uh, my mama said that I was made perfect, that, uh, you know, God made me this way, made me perfect. And, and so that idea, that notion that you should never change who you are, uh, entered into the culture. Well, I want to speak to you today about those things. And I want to speak to you with the message today that I've entitled, We're All Born This Way. That we're all born this way. That, that you may say, well, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that. I'm not this, that. Yeah, but I think what you'll see in Scripture is rather than us getting so caught up in the cultural direction that it's trying to point us to and to defend itself against, that we actually go to Scripture. Wouldn't it be interesting <laughs> to actually go to Scripture and to see what God has to say about the things that culture so quickly tries to define and set up our, our boundaries on, and to discover that we're all born this way, that we're all born a certain way. We were in Ephesians last week, and we want to stay in Ephesians today. I want to go to Ephesians chapter 2, and, and I want to pick up in verse 1. Uh, there, uh, and, and really uh, all four of these first verses kind of all go in one sentence. Paul does a lot of long sentences in, in Ephesians. Uh, chapter 1 is a huge sentence and chapter 2 also, but we'll break it up a little bit. Uh, so he is talking to the Ephesians. He's talking to a Gentile audience, uh, and, and that's important to understand. So when he says the you, primarily he's talking to the members of the churches in Galatia that are pre predominantly Gentile. And he says, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked. In other words, you not only walked in the way of the world, but you were dead to do anything about it. 
That's what he means by being dead in those trespasses. It wasn't that it didn't have any effect on you. It's that you did not have any muscular, spiritually muscular ability to get out of it. You were born this way. You, you were dead in the trespasses and in the sins in which you walked. Next verse, or the rest of verse 2, he says, and this is what we all did. We followed the course of this world. Following the prince of the power of the air. We followed the world that is following uh, Satan. We're following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. The sons of disobedience being the culture, being the world in Paul's writing. He says that, that this is what you do when you're dead. You follow the course of the world. And the course of the world is following the leadership and the guidance of the spiritual leadership of that, which is the prince of the power of the air, who we know of as the devil or as Satan. And he is the one that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, and then he goes on to say in the next verse, among whom, now he's not talking about you Galatians now, but he's including we Jews and you Gentiles. And he says, we all, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. You were born this way. Okay? You were born this way. It's interesting when, when we, uh, we get upset about that phraseology and say, no, you weren't, no, you weren't. Actually, we all were. Let me tell you again, just in case you think you're exempt from it, among whom we all once lived. How did we all at least once live or some today do live who continue to follow uh, the course of this world following the leadership of the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works uh, uh, among mankind, among whom we all once lived in those passions. Notice that. We all once lived in the passions of our flesh. And there was a time when greed was bad, but then greed became good. There was a time when uh, being born this way, as uh, Gaga refers to, was seen as sinful, and now it is embraced as good. Well, we all once lived in various passions of our flesh. It may not be this specific one, it may not be that specific one, but I promise you there is one. There is one that we all follow after, we all once lived in, we all carried out the desires of the body and the mind, not just the uh, uncontrollable desires of the body, but also those that are influenced by the mind, so that's the world we lived in when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. That's the world that the culture uh, that is uh, headed all in one direction, led by the leadership of, of, of Satan, that's, that's what is guiding it. Now, look at this and look at the news. Look at this and look at culture and tell me you don't see it. A culture that lives in the passions of the flesh. A culture that carries out the desires of the body and the mind and thinks that that is the highest and most noble thing for people to do. And we were by nature children of wrath. Now I want to insert just a touch of theology here. Because by nature what he means is fallen nature. We are by fallen nature children of wrath, children deserving the judgment and the punishment of God because our fallen nature inherited from Adam and Eve carried down through generations requiring Jesus to come and to deal with this is how we all live. We live by the passions. We live by the desires of the body and the mind. We are naturally born this way okay so don't get too upset when somebody says well I'm born this way and so I have to live we're all born this way all right so don't go saying well I'm above that I'm beyond that I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a good person no we're all you are born this way because we all come from a fallen nature just like the rest of mankind. 
We are no different. We're not here because we are exempt. We're not here in this room this morning because somehow we rose above that or we were born to better families or we had a better upbringing or somehow we were different or we never thought of. No, we're all born this way. Now what culture has done is step by step, one after another, it's taken some of the categorical sins like greed and it has actually raised it up to be acceptable. It's taken things like anger back in the 19th century and it rose it up to be something that's actually good for a man to have. It's taken things like homosexuality. It's it's, uh, taken things like transgenderism and it's actually risen it up and said that that is completely normal. You're born this way. And I'm not going to attack those things. Uh, That's not my intention. What I want to share with you is rather than you begin to think that you're better than all of that, You're just like all of that. You're no different. We all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath. Oh, please try to get away from thinking that you're better than some other person. All right? Get away from thinking I am more moral than... No, realize that in our fallen nature... We're all born this way. We're all born this way. What we see culture do now is it tries to take those different aspects that it chooses, things that are related to the desires of the body and the passions of the flesh, and it tries to uplift those as noble, okay? Like George Gecko's movie did, right, in Wall Street in 1987, and now suddenly greed is actually a quality for a good businessman to have, or really a good quality for culture to have. Now we have seen that risen up in other areas, and they're saying, this is what you want, this is the quality you should have. Well, uh, it's just a subset of a general reality that affects all of us. Now, we have a tendency to just pick and choose, all right? So, you know, homosexuality, man, we're really against that. You know, maybe greed, well, we're really against that, but, you know, gossip's not a big deal. I'm okay with that. You know, I'm just, I don't gossip, but let me tell you about this person. It's not gossip, it's the news, it's the truth. It's not gossip if it's the truth. And we begin to accept so many things that the Bible speaks so vehemently against. And we say, well, that's not nearly as bad as homosexuality. That's not nearly as bad as greed. That's not nearly as bad as this or that. And thus the hypocrisy begins to come in. When we begin to take some of the passions and say they're okay, and it's just the other passions that we oppose. What Paul is trying to tell the Galatians, and which he includes himself, which is so powerful here, is that we all lived in passion. We all lived in this desires of the body and the mind. We are all by nature. Meaning what? Meaning we're born this way. We're born this way. We are all by nature children that deserve God's judgment. Children of wrath. We, the church Paul is talking about in this case, are just like the rest of mankind. All right? Now, uh, that needs to sit in because if, if you watch Fox News or you watch CNN News, you're going uh, to wind up siding one side or the other. But I'm going to tell you, Scripture really has a much bigger picture in mind. And it is that we are all, by nature, children of wrath. All of us, including you and including me. Well, I think including me, but definitely including you. We're all by nature children of wrath. So this is what the truth I want you to know. This is the statement, and it's not an easy statement to put out, but it is that whether or not you are born this way, here's the thing. In Christ, you're born again. So what I want to do is not so much get you to change your politics. I don't want to get you to switch sides on your cultural view. I want you to be born again. Because in being born again, you don't have to any further become a child of wrath. 
You no longer have to live by your natural tendencies. You don't have to be driven by the passions and those bodily desires and those mindful desires that you have. And that is the life of Christ. Christ shows us the potential that we have when we have the Holy Spirit of God in us when we are saved. When we are, as Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said, man, here's the deal. Uh, Nicodemus says, what have I got to do so that I can go to heaven? And he says, no, you're going to have to be born again. You're going to have to be born from above. So, uh, the, your body in its natural self, it's, it, you're just a child of wrath. Uh, in your natural self, you're following the course of this world, which is following the course of the prince of the power of the air, Satan himself. Uh, there is no hope for any of us. Do you understand? The only way that we can rise above it is to be born again. But here's what happens when we're born again. When we take on the nature of Christ, uh, th this may be a little, let me just see if I can say it. We actually become human. Because humans were not designed to be children of wrath. It is not our nature to be driven by passion. It's not our nature to have these bodily desires and these mindful desires that just control us like a, like a, a ping pong, a back and forth tossed about by every different teaching that comes along. You know that when Adam and Eve were first created, the way they lived before the fall is the way that God desires for you to live. It is the way that Jesus modeled for you to live. So if you ask me, what is humanity supposed to be? Well, it's supposed to be Christ-like. And here's the difference. You see what's going on in these verses? You see selfishness, right? You see I'm being driven by passions. I'm being driven by lust. I'm being driven by all of these things of pride, by my greed, by my, all this kind of whatever it might be that's really gotten your attention right now. That is what's driven you. But what does Christ demonstrate that our humanity is supposed to be? It's self-sacrificial. You see, the, the human that we were intended to be, that, that is created in the image of God, that Jesus modeled for us, who was without sin, though tempted, he was without sin, the, the model of humanity that is there for you when you are born again is the human that is self-sacrificial. Now, that's not what you hear much of. That's not what anybody's going for. Join our political party and you will sacrifice the rest of your life. No, it's join our party and you'll have everything you want. Join our party, you won't have to change a bit. Join our party and you can just keep going the way you're going and we'll back you up. But see, that's not human nature in the garden. And that's not the human nature that God reconciles in Christ. That is the self-sacrificial, the one who does things for others, the one who denies the self and, and takes up the cross and follows daily. Now, that is the model that we are to have. And you can't have that in your present fallen condition. I'm sorry. You can try morality. It'll last for weeks. But you can't do it long term unless you're born again. Unless there is in you something entirely new that the Creator who created you to begin with can create within you that'll be manifested that one day when Christ returns and sets up His throne but which we can live now because we're born again. No, I'm sorry, Nicodemus. There's nothing you can do. You have to be born from above. You have to be born again. But the good news is that God made it possible. All right? The bad news is the world tells you to follow your passions. Uh, God says that is wrong, but here's the good news. So we have the big, the, the big contrasting statement in the next verse in Ephesians. He says, but God. So after just telling us just how bad we are, <laughs> Paul says, but God. But God. But God who is rich in mercy 
And he uses that rich in mercy, lavishness. He, he just repeats this over and over again for us. He says, God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us. You know, God loves you even though you're fallen. God loves you even though you're driven by earthly passion. You know that God loves you even though you are pursuing the desires of your flesh. He's not loving you because you've escaped from it. He's not loving you because you've said no to a lot of things. He loves you despite of yourself. God, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, that's how He began the sentence. Remember, we were dead in our trespasses, but guess what? Even when we were dead, He made us alive together with Christ. For by grace you've been saved. Not the result of works, he'll go on to say in a few verses. But God who is rich in mercy and with a great love that he had for me, despite the fact that I wasn't looking for him or interested in him or didn't think I needed him, that I was pretty convinced that what I thought about myself and the, what I thought about my plans and what I thought about the world was the correct view, that God, nonetheless, he loved me so much that while I was still dead in all of that and I was following the course of this world and, and, and I was following after the things that Satan was holding up as the carrots for me to chase after and to pursue and, and my passions were being legitimized to where... Uh, well, uh, you know, I was being raised in, the, in the, the love generation, right? And all of that was being shown as, oh, that's normal, that's natural, that's what you ought to have. God loved me so much that He made me alive in Christ. He caused me to be born again. He gave me real life. And He did it not on the basis of my intellect or my ritualism, my religion, but on the basis of His grace. Because it's by grace that you're saved. It's by grace that you become born again. And so, this is the work that God does for us. And when He does this work, then He transforms us. And the things that, you know, so much of the culture is, can I be a Christian and still be greedy? Can I be a Christian and still have these passions? You see, we want both, don't we? Well, we want life in Christ to be a, a, a stamp of approval on what we've already chosen in our passions. You know, it's like, Lord, uh, I just bought this new car and I'm praying that you'll help me pay for it. You know, it's sort of that after the fact kind of thing. It's like I've already made my decision and now I've got to need you to bless the decision I made. No, no, he, he has transformed us and as such, then we live differently. So it's not a matter of whether you're born this way. It's how you're born again. And this is the way that you're born again. He'll tell us over in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 6, he says, you are not your own. Why? Because you've been bought with a price. The price of the blood of Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. And so now what we do is we glorify God in our body. We don't glorify passions. We don't glorify desires. We don't glorify the things of this world. We don't glorify greed. All these other things, anger, all of that other. No, what we do is we glorify God. When we're born again, we've been bought with a price. And we need to appreciate the value that it took to transform us from the passions of this world to the passions of Christ and to see that transformation take place and to realize that we're no longer our own or maybe a way to say that is we're not our old self anymore. We're different. We're a different people. We are now reconciled to God. But let me give you this statement. And it is that it is only through new birth that we are reconciled to God. If that's missing in your life, I don't care what passion, direction, avenue, career choice, ideology, uh, politics you pursue, you're going to wind up pursuing the things of the world. It is only through new birth that you are reconciled to Him. 
So new birth is not just a way to, uh, to fix things up. It is how we become reconciled with God. It's how he, uh, he's able to work with us, his spirit to come and to live in us. Uh, this is what Paul says in uh, Colossians, which uh, if you're going to study Ephesians, you need to study Colossians because the two go right hand in hand. He says, and you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, that's what we were talking about at the beginning, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death. He who? He, Jesus. Jesus has reconciled us in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you now holy and blameless and above reproach before him. This is what Jesus did. He didn't just die so you get a ticket to heaven. He didn't just die to pay for the sins you had committed up to a certain point. See, this is the problem, I'm sorry, with losing your salvation. It is the, the notion that Jesus paid for your sins up to a point. And now you go sin again, you're going to lose your salvation. But uh, Hebrews tells us there's no more blood to offer. No, no, he did far more than that. No, he has reconciled us in uh, his body of flesh by his death. Uh, he will say in the previous chapter 1 of Ephesians that we now sit with Jesus in the heavenly places. All right? He has reconciled us in his body of flesh by his death in order to present us holy, in order to present us blameless, in order that now we live above reproach before him. We're not just sneaking in. We're not just barely going to make it. We're not just going to hope for the rest of our life that we don't mess up something so bad that, that, that we fail to get in. No, He has reconciled us with Him. I don't care how you were born this way. It doesn't matter which way you were born. We were all born with defect after defect after defect as far as, as culture, as the world, as the fallen nature is concerned. But now we stand holy we, we've been reconciled with Him. We have a relationship now by His death with the Father and we are going to be presented holy and blameless. That is the transformation that takes place when we're born again. Boy, if you've held off on that, you're missing everything. Uh, you can come to every church, every activity, every gathering, but if you hold off on that, you've missed everything. If you don't receive Christ as your Savior, if you're so caught up in the culture's definition and identity of who you are, and you do not see that you have such a surpassing identity in Jesus, then you are going to fall so far short of what God can do and has to do with your life. And I just want to end with, with, with 2 uh, uh, Corinthians 5.17. I've used this before, but I think it just fits so well that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. Okay? The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. Now, there are some that don't want the new. All right, and if you're a believer, don't be surprised by that. There are some that want to hang on to the old. They like the old. They don't like the new. They like the old. They like that old of themselves. And so they, do never, they never come to Christ in salvation. They, they're never genuinely transformed because they don't want to let go of the old. We see that in Scripture. We see that in the letters. There are those who, who wanted to hang on to the old part of themselves that they kind of like and never sell everything. That's the rich young ruler. But if anyone is in Christ, he's new. I don't care which way you were born. You need to come to Christ. And you'll be born again. You'll be a new creation. And that old will pass away and we'll see what God has for you. Because the new will come. The new will come.